According to the CDC, nearly 40 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated. The news may be encouraging for people who are trying to get their lives back on track. But for many others, the long-term mental and physical effects of the pandemic will linger. A recent piece in The Atlantic says, quote, the quiet moments after adrenaline fades and normalcy resumes may be unexpectedly punishing. Tamar Rodney was interviewed for that piece and joins me now. She's an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing. Tamar, thanks very much for being with us. Why do some people continue to feel anxious or depressed despite low COVID infections and high vaccination rates? My pleasure to be with you. And one of the reasons is that the anxiety associated with COVID-19 is still very present. And the reason it's considered a threat is that because there are so many unanswered questions about what happens next, how long will it really last, and when will we go back to what we're going to term new normal. And so with those questions unanswered, there still remains this anxiety associated with COVID-19. Well, how has trauma disproportionately affected minorities? Because we know of the disparities um, that have really uh, come to the surface in a way that we hadn't seen exposed necessarily to that extent before the pandemic. How has trauma disproportionately affected minority communities? So here we saw an opportunity to highlight what is a societal divide. It's not new, but for the first time we're seeing a human life cost to it. And so I would term it as we have reaffirmed the disparities that exist, both social and health, and we have reopened these old scars, which is going to leave our minority groups with an even deeper traumatic scar. So it's going to take a much longer time to heal from not just the physical effects of COVID-19, but also the emotional effects. Yeah, Americans have also experienced other traumatic events this past year. The deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor and others, the Capitol insurrection and a rise in mass shootings. When you look at sort of the time frame, um, this is a lot that uh, people have been contending with. Um, how long might it take for some people to kind of process and heal from these kinds of events? So everyone is going to heal on their own timeline. There is no specific time period to allow for grieving because each of us have been impacted in a different way. And so while we go through the stages which have been established, what we need to allow is enough time. And this could literally take months to years to be able to process those emotions. Well, some who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 may experience survivor's guilt. And this is similar to what happened to New Yorkers after 9-11 and even during the AIDS epidemic of the 1980s. What are some ways that we can help these people heal as well? So it, with COVID-19, we lost out an opportunity to go through the normal grief process, to do the things for our loved ones that would show that we care. And so having that loss, it's important to be able to process that even after the event and doing the things that your loved ones would have appreciated, although they're not here anymore. And so taking the time to do those individual meaningful things for them is important. And also giving yourself permission to, so, to allow that guilt process to go through itself. And um, there's nothing wrong with these emotions. We need to accept them as normal. And that might be the starting place for us to begin that healing process. Yes, it's so important for people to recognize that is a normal emotion um, and for them to allow themselves to feel it so they can process and work through it. Tamar Rodney for us. Tamar, thank you very much for your time. Thank you as well.